Next on our agenda, I will invite Mr. So Tywin from Proximity Finance. Let me share the biography of Mr. So Tywin from Proximity Finance. Mr. So Tywin oversees the operation team for Proximity Design, Proximity Finance Form, Finance Unit. He is part of the senior management team for proximity finance and senior leadership team for proximity designs. He held various roles in market research, account management, project management, and operations in Singapore and Australia. He received his bachelor degrees in management and marketing from Monash University at Melbourne, his MBA and Master of Commerce from Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. I am pleased to invite Mr. So Tywin to share their case study of digitalization during COVID-19. Thank you very much, Masule, for your kind introduction. And <clears throat> thank you very much for this work for this amazing event. Um, I'm very uh, honored to be here. And uh, today I would like to uh, tell everyone about the digitalization during COVID-19 and how we kind of overcome this uh, this year. So um, just a bit about uh, ourselves. Uh, so probably next slide, uh, please, Masule. Um, we are actually, sorry, maybe I'll just share the screen myself uh, and then uh, do the um, slide control, if it's okay. So um, we are actually uh, Myanmar's first uh, farmers focused microfinance institution. So we were part of uh, proximity design as a microfinance unit. Uh, proximity design is actually an award winning social enterprise with over 15 years of experience achieving social impact within rural Myanmar. We offer uh, as uh, proximity finance a suite of, of innovative uh, social products uh, basically tailored to the needs of rural family. We currently serve over 150,000 smallholder farmers. Um, the new shareholders for Proximity Finance includes uh, FinFan, uh, Nordic Microfinance Initiative, and Propago, which is a subsidiary of um, Agency Frenza, uh the development. So, uh, in short, AFD. And um, within Proximity Finance, uh, just a bit of uh, our numbers, uh, we have as of September 2020, uh, 147,000 borrowers and uh, 50 million in portfolio. So average loan side for us stands at around uh, $370 USD. Um, for the 2020-2020, we, we can uh, proudly say that is a year of digital transformation for, for us. We aim to grow smart and basically uh, intend to, to increase internal efficiency as well as improve our uh, customer experience uh, across the whole country. So we uh, implemented Musoni core banking system early in the year and uh, tablet-based field application in the second half of 2020. So by now, 80% uh, of our loan management process is actually just digitized. Uh, our yield have increased uh, in terms of general staff productivity. Uh, and also uh, we are aiming to decrease operational exp uh, expenses significantly in the next few months, uh, as well as we uh, improve our pro processes. So um, in the recent month, we have also started uh, piloting mobile money transfer for our interest collection, basically working with uh, Ongo Myanmar. So, so for this year, I think uh, there were many people that uh, we would like to thank. And uh, among them, um, uh, the, the most key uh, people are uh, the teams from uh, Musoni and the teams from Pisa Work, as well as everyone working within uh, Proximity Finance. So, um, we would be, I guess, curious about uh, how we managed to overcome uh, uh, this sort of rollout within COVID uh, in, in the last uh, nine months. Uh, and, and I guess it's, it's, um, it's all down to the preparation. So even though on the surface, we might seem like we have been very quick uh, in terms of rollout, uh, we have been preparing this for quite, a, quite some time, uh, almost uh, uh, one and a half years, even before the rollout. Uh, 
um, uh, the first thing that we really need uh, in order to kind of have a smooth rollout uh, within any time, uh, even if it's COVID or even if it's uh, any challenging period, is that we need to be uh, having a clear uh, digital transformation roadmap. So the, when we're talking about the roadmap, I guess uh, a lot of the uh, panelists have also talked about this. So basically we have to analyze on our current digital uh, strategy, what's actually deficient within that, um, and then go on to formulate uh, what exactly we want to do to achieve a future state uh, from there on how we want to operationalize it and then uh, execute and thereby achieve our transformation. But what we really need to remember on this is that um, we need to know what technologies are relevant so that, that we can make full use of it and then we can accelerate our transformation momentum. Quite often a lot of the mistakes will come around uh, you shop for too much technologies within the market and you get attracted by too much uh, uh, options or, or, or uh, um, platforms and then you get confused what you want to do and thereby you lose your clarity on this. So I think it is very, very important to have a clear digital transformation roadmap and really uh, thoroughly following it. The next one is uh, coming to finding the right system or finding the right technology. Uh, when we were doing uh, this, uh, we actually considered four factors. Uh, the first one is we wanted to make sure uh, the partner that we will be working with is having a strong industry experience. Uh, we want to have a, an on-time support structure, uh, ideally speaking, a local presence, um, and then we uh, not only we want to grow, but also we also uh, we want to make sure uh, the system and the providers have the uh, the growth potential. Uh, and many years down the road, um, enjoying all these uh, achievement. Uh, and then, last but not least, a reasonable cost structure. So, with that, um, the reason why we we have um, uh, chosen Musoni is because uh, on Musoni's side, they have a lot of um, international as well as local experience, but at the same time with the Starworks uh, partner, uh, as partner, uh, we, we actually have a more uh, localized uh, approach and thereby injecting a lot of uh, local expertise uh, and local kind of cultural mindset into uh, the execution process. The other thing as well is that um, uh, they have managed to share a lot of the the, the um, good practice as well as do's and don'ts uh, by um, um, their learning experiences from past execution. So that has been uh, helpful for us within a year to uh, one, prevent um, unnecessary kind of problem and two, um, really keeping us on track with a lot of the things that we do within a year. So, so the um, that has also been uh, um, uh, very important for our uh, key success in delivery uh, within this year. I think uh, whatever change happened, uh, just like this huge transformation project, uh, we really need to prepare those who are affected by this change. So um, when, when we're talking about this, it may mean uh, everyone from loan officers all the way to the head office, we really need to establish what are the need for the changes, uh, prepare the people, uh, how they would be impacted and, and what sort of preparation they need to have in mind. Uh, so way before the commencement of the implementation or execution, we have been uh, working with our learning and development team to, to really um, formulate uh, the change management in the process. So uh, uh, talking about uh, how change management um, uh, is important and what sort of mentality they need to have, what sort of digitalization uh, awareness and what sort of uh, familiarity that they need to have way before the system. Quite often, uh, we would imagine system training would come last, but we actually have done twice. Uh, so in a sense, we have done uh, system training once way before all these implementation. And then again, after the training uh, with more detail and more refreshment and more uh, um, customization that we have actually done. Uh, we also have to update them to every single stage. So even if there is 
any delay or even if, there, uh, if we are facing any potential roadblock, we even have to uh, keep everyone informed uh, at every single uh, stage of before, during and after, after changes. And um, uh, to emphasize like uh, what we really need to make sure is communicate, communicate and communicate everything about the pro project. Uh, so so e even with the mistakes, even with the learning, even with uh, um, the, the potential uh, improvement or potential kind of um, um, uh, alternative that they will be getting, all of these need to be communicated uh, to the people who are affected and make sure we have to have the right team. Uh, so uh, quite often we will have thinkers and doers and the people person. So, so we all need to make sure that all these three aspects uh, would have to be balanced. Um, technical specialists sometimes uh, can get very focused on um, the, the, the progress or the, the, uh, the te technicality of of, of these processes that they often forget about other aspects of it. So uh, they all have to be empathetic about um, those affected uh, by these transformation as well. So quite often uh, we may think of a customization and that customization, um, even though thinking from the technical perspective may sound uh, great, but when you're actually using it in the field, it might not work the same way as the technical specialist had thought about. So we really need to make sure there's a balance in between that as well. Um, all the responsibilities uh, must be assigned uh, very clearly and communicated very clearly because what we don't want to have is a loss, loss of direction. Uh, once you have a lost direction, uh, it's actually more, more negative towards the project uh, progress and uh, it will also be more detrimental than uh, uh, schedule delays. On, each, um, each day, each progress, uh, we have to make sure that all accountabilities are taken by everyone and that uh, for any unprecedented cases, we need to have black backup plan because um, whatever we might have planned beforehand may never uh, end up working. And therefore, um, by taking these calculated risks, uh, we need to always have our backup plan to, to, to make sure that uh, we can balance our uh, be it project delay or be it uh, the potential cost that we may have. The safety net environment is the most important when it comes to all these uh, project implementation. Quite often uh, when we are thinking about project delays or project costs, we often tend to, to, to find who is to blame for, what's the mistake to make and so on. Um, uh, and and I think we need to really note over here, it's not about blaming. Uh, it's not about who is wrong, who is right. Uh, it's not about um, uh, the effect on everyone. It's actually about how you want to move forward. It's how you want to control that progress. It's how you want to um, uh, manage your exposure so that you can still move forward even if there are problems actually stopping your progress. So, so I think everyone needs to have that safety net environment. Um, again, to emphasize, it's not about blaming, it's really to cooperate and it's really to progress. Within um, this transformation uh, project, uh, what we realized is that the senior management must involve uh, in, in be it daily uh, um, ad hoc issue meeting or uh, weekly progress meeting or even uh, monthly regular catch up with our partners and vendors, etc. So uh, the, the ideal scenario is that we want to make sure we spot the needs quicker, we support the people in time, uh, we provide the results quicker, make the decision process faster so that uh, we, we, we know before we fail and we, we are ready for all these contingency plans. Uh, and at all stage, uh, what we also need to make sure is we appreciate everyone's effort, be it our own or be it from the vendor side to make sure that um, they are recognized. I, uh, one uh, uh, thing that we can emphasize over here as well is uh, when we talk about senior management, uh, our role uh, for the project is to make sure we make their life easier, it's not to make it more difficult. So one thing that we always constantly remind ourselves is we are there to support, we are there to make things happen, but uh, the actual 
uh, ownership is among the, everyone that is on this project. So, so I, I think uh, we also need to make sure uh, we don't cross that line too much. On the quality de deliveries, we have been very stubborn, uh, but we have also been very realistic with our expectations. Um, I always like this fast, good and cheap kind of um, triangle, mainly because whatever fast and good, um, it will be costly. Uh, whatever uh, um, uh, not prioritized or whatever uh, not willing to pay, uh, it will always come as low priority. So, so I think uh, uh, for any project management or even for senior management or even for every one of us within the project, we really need to have this kind of triangle between fast, good and cheap uh, balance so that we are not asking the uh, impossible to, to the project team, uh, impossible uh, from the vendor. So, so we really need to be realistic with our expectation, always maintain the right balance. Uh, only then you can move forward because um, otherwise you will be arguing over unnecessary um, um, arguments and that uh, they will, will never be able to get forward. In all stages, uh, we have to make sure we remain passionate about everything about why we started uh, on the transformation, why we started the system, why we um, uh, involve all these people, or why, why we want to work, make this work for the people, what, what would be the mistakes um, that we have learned from and how we can move forward or how we can uh, use these learning going forward, um, what sort of quality deliveries, even if it means data structure, uh, data, um, um, uh, consistency, uh, data accuracy, all these, we need to be passionate about it, um, what we want to achieve, and even what the re regrets that we have, we really need to be passionate about it. I guess through these uh, projects, we will have a lot of argument, a lot of heated conversation, but ultimately what we want to make sure is we want to achieve internal efficiency. We want to make things work for the, our customers or clients, and we want to make it quicker for our team who are really using it. So, so I think one thing to emphasize over here is by, by digitalization, uh, we often think that uh, we will reduce interaction with customers. Actually, that's not true. The reason why we are trying to digitalize is mainly because we want to achieve most of the internal efficiency so that we are not wasting customers' time in the front. So, so we really need to make sure that um, customers' time, staff time, they are all very precious and therefore how every second, how every minute is spent must be calculated very responsibly and therefore all these digitalization, all these um, uh, transformation projects are meant to reduce all these time, energy, costs that we put in the front. So um, to kind of conclude this, um, um, I, I, I particularly like what Lindsay Herbert, uh, who is the Chief Innovation Officer of IBM currently, uh, uh, she said that don't transform to preserve the how you do business, transform it to match the why you do business. So um, it's, it's always about why we want to do it. It's always about why we exit. It's always about why we want to um, transform, how we, why we want to move forward. So um, with that, um, I would also like to encourage everyone, including MFIs or including all the uh, institution, whenever you are transforming, always try to think why you are doing business and choose what you want to do, what technology you want to implement uh, to match this. Thank you very much. And you can find out more about us uh, on these information. And also you can find me on LinkedIn if you have any other questions about this um, uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your precious time and sharing with us.